Today we're talking New York oddities. The darker side. The night side. Bum, bum, bum. Hello and welcome, you made it, you're here. You're on Slim Jim Jammer, your boy Jimmy out of Brooklyn. You're on my channel, me canal. If you enjoy the content and you want to support, you can hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell so you're alerted every time I got a brand new episode of Slim Jim Jenner coming at you. It's every week, you know. It's a random. It's a totally random. This guy never comes out every week, but it's like, when? When? Eh? Today we're talking New York oddities. The darker side. The night side. Bum, bum, bum. Anyone that's a New Yorker has this sense that they, at one point, have bested the city. That they know New York. That New York is their plaything. They feel as though they've mastered New York City. And they want to go someplace else. Because it's all been done. But New York has a way of shaking you back, bringing you back to reality, and making you humble, humbling you greatly. And New York City nightlife has that ability. On this week's episode, we're talking New York City nightlife and the darker side, how it humbles you to the core and leaves your soul in tatters on the floor. So there used to be a bar, and it is since defunct, known as Bizarre. Bizarre bar. It was in Bushwick, Brooklyn. This bar was exactly as it sounds. Quite bizarre. It was a bizarre bar. With wild events. Again, they were definitely into showcasing the outer world of entertainment. I used to go there semi-frequently. Not frequently. I'd been there semi-occasionally. What is it? The, what is it worried to me? I went there a few times. When I went there, I saw some things that I will truly never forget. When I first arrived to the bar, I go to order a drink. And for some reason, there seems to be something big and rolled up at the base of the bar, like some sort of storage. I don't know. So I step on it, and I'm ordering my drink. And I'm standing on whatever this big roll of something is. And I've come to find out this big roll of something is not a something. It's a big roll of someone. Yeah. There's a small sign on the bar that says, Feel free to step on me. Yours truly, the human carpet. And I look down, and what I'm standing on is a man wrapped in a carpet, laying on the floor. And he has a hole cut in the face of the carpet so that he can breathe. And I come to find later that this is a character that's been in the New York nightlife scene for quite a while. Giorgio, apparently, is his name. Giorgio the human carpet. He prefers if you step on him with high heels. Giorgio learned, growing up in Italy as a young child, that he liked to have a lot of weight and things pressed up on his body. So now he exploits that in fetishization parties, I suppose. All throughout the city of New York. So this is my introduction to the party. When I get there, a friend of mine is like, Hey, you see the human carpet? <laughs> she jumps up. <laughs> starts dancing on it. Isn't this hilarious? So... She was enjoying herself at the situation. I was a bit tentative to get involved and to enjoy myself quite as much. There later comes a clown on the stage. And my assumption was it was going to be some sort of alternative clown. She proceeds to bust up some light bulbs with a hammer. And she then has these light bulbs strewn across a wooden board. And then she takes her shoes off and walks across the broken pieces of glass. She also broke out an old school bed of nails, and laid down on those nails, and then had weights put on top of her. I don't believe that her, she didn't, yeah, she didn't get skewered. No Iron Maiden situation. It's pretty impressive. And afterwards, she's going to take tips. And personally, you know, I've been working in the service industry for over a decade. I tip my guy. My guy tips. So I felt as though I had to tip her. And I was encouraged by my friend as well. Jimmy got a tip her. You see that act? I was like, yeah, that was horrifying, but impressive, tip-worthy. And then I come to realize the only way that she will accept tips is if you staple the tips to her body with a staple gun she has provided. I didn't want to do this, 
But it's New York nightlife, baby. And I was uh, had a drink, and my friend was encouraging me. So I had to, out of my sense of loyalty to the service industry, I stapled a dollar to her. I felt really, t I tried to give it to her, she wouldn't accept it. I really didn't want to staple it to her, I felt so horrible about it. And then I tried to do it, and it wouldn't work. And then she's like, you really gotta, you gotta just, come on, don't be a, don't be a pussy, you gotta staple it. You gotta commit, do it, you gotta go strong with it. So I did. And I will never forget it. For all of her proud service, she deserves an internet following. So I will link her Instagram in the description below. I believe her name was Alizé the Clown. Find her on Instagrams. The Grand Bone. Another instance of wild nightlife. Not appropriate for the children. I had a friend of mine say, hey, you know, you do stand-up comedy. I'm a comedian too. But I write all my stuff and I have comedic shows. Why don't I come out and see this comedic show that I'm in? And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. You come and see me do stand-up. They were a guest on a radio show that I'd done as well. I said, oh, sure, I'll come out and see your show. They were like, great, I just want to prep you about the show that I do so that you don't get like weirded out. The show is a comedy show that is completely in the nude, naked comedy. And I was like, oh, live entertainment that's naked in New York City? It's unusual about that. And of all things, I had actually seen a naked comedy show in Boston when I was going to college. So, he said, sure. No worries. Naked comedy show. Let's do it. Now, mind you, this naked comedy show was mostly a lot of naked guys. You know comedy. You know. Mostly male-dominated. And there was quite a few jokes about being naked in the show, as you could assume. And they ended up making quite a few jokes at the expense of one of the actors in the show. One problem was, it was kind of goofy. This guy was very handsome. He definitely seemed to be like the most handsome of all of the comedians that was in the show. Everyone could see it was a, a public scenario. The guy had less, he had the least. He had a, uh, he was very much a little, uh, it was, it was, it was, it was not like smaller than average. It was something was, something seemed, yeah, I don't know. They, it was a big joke of the show. They kept drawing attention to it. And the character, his character in the show is kind of like on a quest to seek out some sort of truth as to how he can get his, uh, to be larger. Every place that he goes doesn't work. And there's a lot of like ridiculous horror show jokes. And at one point a guy is like doing a gag with a bunch of ketchup or whatever you know, coming out of his crotch, which was horrifying. And, you know, you're like, okay, I get it. They're doing a little shock comedy. You're already naked, so I'm not super shocked, but whatever. For the grand finale, they're like, we've got it. We've secured the serum, that special juice. It's going to give you what you need to, to solve your problem, the crotchal problem. And there's like well, the one girl in the show and a guy, and they're like, we just got to apply it to the area. So obviously you're like, oh, this girl's gonna put it on the guy. But for comic effect, of course, the guy puts it on him. And they slather him up, and they're like, you know, there's just one thing we need to do to make the serum work. And they come, and I, I just really, I just didn't see this coming. Like I mentioned earlier about New York City humbling you when you think you've seen it all. You ain't seen nothing, Jack. They take a lighter, and they go, the only way to activate the serum. And they go, and they put the lighter to his crotch. His entire member goes up in flames. I mean, I'm talking big burst of fireball. Real flames, just <laughs> his crotch. It was really one giant fireball, I guess. And, that, and then he was like, ah! and he, it goes out. And yeah, I was, um, I had nothing more. To, I couldn't, my brain was broken. I was, I was in the audience, like many people in the audience, broken. After the fact, when I found my friend, I came and asked her and I said, how come you didn't tell me that you were going to light a guy's junk on fire in the show? She goes, oh, I didn't want it to ruin the surprise. And the show was like 15 bucks, I think. And it was like an hour and a half. And after it was all said and done, I thought to myself, and I said to her, you know, if you had just told me straight up, we're going to light a guy's junk on fire, and it had been a five-minute show, you could have charged 30 bucks. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to have a new episode every single week. Right here with your boy, Jimmy out of Brooklyn, Slim Jim Jammer. Make sure you like, subscribe. See you again next week, damn my guy.